Okay. Okay. Uh, we call these line checks, so it'll be really, it should be pretty quick. Uh, but uh, have fun with it. You can interact, say wild shit, it makes it go. <laughs> All right. So this nation uh, for centuries uh, from a multitude of perspectives that of being African American but also First Nation. And seeing how we have elected to treat each other, 
uh, moments where we've been able to find synergy and why. And um, the record really revolves around um, reevaluating our ideals and our principles and, and the, the sort of singular narratives that we have about entire communities and people, right? Um, oftentimes when we speak about Maroons, the sort of linear definition is self-liberated Africans uh, in places where they were uh, taken and brought to, right? And the communities that they built outside of those structures. But what people don't talk about is the fact that oftentimes there were many First Nation people and oftentimes there were many European descent Americans that came from all, all kinds of other systems like indentured servitude. And these were actually places where human beings prioritized being human as the tribe. And so the, the record is sort of centered around that energy and trying to get back to uh, the good sense of being able to look at another human being and know that you're looking at something cosmic and beautiful right. and not a thing.
All right. Now I'll take this moment to introduce you to the members of the ensemble. So you know who you're listening to. Or as they say in New Orleans, who you're listening at. <laughs> now we're going to start with our guitarist who hails from Muskegon, Michigan. very fortunate to have him with us. I feel like um, he's going to be the guy that's going to define a new generation of, of guitarists. Um, every time I hear him play, um, incredibly um, original and um, rooted and Groundbreaking at the same time. Um, it's just the way that he um, he scrambles the eggs, as the, uh, the older folks say. Um, but he has all the hands, and um, he's only 28 years old. And um, yeah, just a new guitar hero. You mark my words, Cecil Alexander. Bates from New York, New York. Yeah. All of 19 years old. Yeah. We can't get him to keep his shirt on, folks. <laughs> yeah, everywhere we go, we're, on, we're in the airport, and if we have a problem, you know, we, we, <laughs> we, we try to, to, um, to avoid, you know, tension, but whenever there's an issue, Rioma is ready, he takes the shirt off. So if you read something like, I'm like it was, you know, someone's looking for, okay, okay, we're in business, if somebody's not going to try to see uh, an upgrade for someone, we're going to take the shirt off. Take the shirt off. <laughs> like, find baby oil. <laughs> but, but it also works in reverse, right? Like we could be, you know, somewhere and we're in, you know, let's, let's say we're, we're in Korea somewhere and, and we, we, the security is giving us a hard time. And also, real my shirt you know, takes it off. He's like, all cut up and all of the cuts have cuts. <laughs> so it works like that. She said, take off. I, I just, um, I just um, made that up. <laughs> it's 19 years old. You think I would be out here with a 19 year old, right? In this era, be like, yeah, take your shirt off when we have problems in the airport. Wow. <laughs> Way to objectify a lady. No, I made that up, sorry. I'm feeling good tonight. <laughs> no, this, I mean, he's like, he's actually the, the just a kind, warm, sweetest, curious, like, you know, honestly, we have so much fun with him. He's just like so loving and also he's like, re like ready to go. He's, anytime we're in the sound check, Cecil's playing, they're like playing through some of the hardest language and all this stuff, and he's like, un he just won't relent. And I love that about his character when he plays and improvises. It's like he's committed to telling a story in his playing, which is really rare these days. So for me, I just love what he's going to develop and what he's already developing. So y'all please give up a real my time. <laughs> All The scion of the Howl clan, his father's over there too. That's right. So I have left your right. We're going to be a master. You're going to hear it in a minute. We got, we'll do West of the West. And so we'll bring him up. You'll see, you'll see um, uh, legacy and just cosmicness at all at the same time. And um, uh, this young man I've known since he was about six or seven years old. And uh, we actually met at a sound check at Yoshi's in Oakland. And uh, it's just, for me, it's a red letter moment and day in my life. Like, if, if I end up, hopefully, end up being 100 years old somewhere, and like, and no matter what's going what on, I do have the ability to remember or not. If there's, you know, a few moments in my life I know I want to remember, and this one is definitely top three, meeting him. So he comes to listen. He's, he's in my dressing room. 
right? The dressing room was locked. <laughs> I get into there, I'm like, what are you doing? He's sitting in my, and he's in my trumpet case, going through my things. He's like, what's this, what's this? I said, oh, uh, you know, these are my things and stuff, so we're talking for a minute. And um, I said, how did you get in here? It was locked. He's like, oh, I let myself in. <laughs> and so we're talking, and he stands up after about five minutes. He puts his hand on my knee, and he says, you know, I've been listening to you for a long time. He sits. I said, oh, really have you? He says, yeah, you know, and uh, I'm ready to be in the band. I'm ready to be in the band. I said, oh, okay, uh, well, <laughs> okay, that, you know, well, listen, let's talk. So I said, you really want to play music? He says, yes. I said, well, I'm going to tell you something I need you to remember. I'm like, listen, if you can give me six to seven hours a day practicing, six days a week for the next 10 years, then you'll be good enough to be able to come and walk with us at a sound check. And this is what I loved about it. He didn't back up. He wasn't like, six hours? You know, this kind of thing. His reaction was like, it was like I was talking to a man child. He, he understood it was, he was teachable immediately from the first moment. He was teaching me and I was teaching him. And um, before the set started, you know, so I told him he wasn't going to be able to play that night. And so he, he was, you know, it was, but we, again, we're, so much of what we're dealing with today is about uh, um, trusting your eyes in moments where maybe you shouldn't just deal with your eyes so much, <laughs> right? So I'm looking at this kid and I'm saying, you can't play with us, you're too young. That's the actual reaction without having heard him play at all. But we're, but we're speaking and, and it's so and he's so impressive and brilliant and radiant and cure, all of the things. So I said, like, okay, just hang out. So... Before the set starts, we're walking to the stage, and he's sitting on the stage, already dressed, ready. He's got his drumsticks in his hand. And I said, this is the, my band is late. He's at the stage, right? So before we go on, I say, you know, and at the time we were calling him L.A. His name is Ele. I said, hey, L.A., do you want to play this? What do you know? You know, Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, you know, Mary Had a Little Lamb. And he goes, you cast no footprints by Wayne Shorter? That's that young, right? And now, you know, I, I, I love telling this story. I know sometimes he's probably annoyed at hearing these, like, I, yes, I was six once, you know. Um, but to see the, the young man that he has become, how he comports himself, um, that, he, that he walks with integrity, that he plays with integrity, that his commitment to the music, its history, its canon, his babas, is peerless in terms of what I have seen as, as being fortunate enough to be the elder in certain interactions. So I just commend him for his hard work. I think he's the hardest working young man I've seen in this, in this moment and certainly going to be the next morning on his instrument for the generation of practitioners, says me. So please, Mr. Ely, how long ago? I love these folks, and you should know the, the rooted forms of this music. So if he's in New Orleans, Louisiana, or if he's in Mali, or Senegal, or Gambia, or Guinea, or Ga Ghana, um, where his family is also from, this is the guy that it, they cite in this moment as being one of the true and great masters of this music. Not just in the traditional sense, but also his compositional acumen puts these instruments that for a very long time people have had very linear perceptions of in context with things that would blow up your notion of possibility musically. Wow. So he is a phenomenal talent and a king in this music. Please give it up for Mr. Weedy. Brown. Last but never least, we have the lady of the outfit. Come on, y'all. Now, um, I met Elena when she's 16 years old. Uh, about a year later, um, she's in New York. Um, and she showed up to the Blue Note, which is a, a jazz club in New York where we were playing. It has the same name as this one. You guys know that? <laughs> um, so, yeah, you can clap for the Blue Note. We're in the Blue Note. 
Um, she shows up to the Blue Note, 17 years old, with her brother Samora, who is also certainly genius. Um, and we talk for two hours just about what, what they want their futures to look like. And I mean, the conversation is staggering. I mean, I'm just like breathtaking, just listening to the things they're intimating about their futures. And so I asked her if she'd be willing to sit in, uh, which is a very rare thing at that time. And she happened to walk onto the stage on the song that was written about a massacre that happened in New Orleans after the hurricane. The end of the song was a prayer, sort of a litany uh, to the people who had been killed, American citizens, for trying to walk over a bridge to another district. And um, she walked into the stage and she began to speak. And when she played, I immediately, I couldn't breathe. I was full of tears. And there were a lot of really wet eyes in the audience uh, during this moment. And for me, this is also one of those red letter moments in my life where I realized that I had to reevaluate my own standing and feeling about what I was creating. I knew after hearing her in that moment that I had to take myself out of my own musical environment. I needed to, to that my perspective shouldn't be the paramount perspective musically, and that I needed to take a step back to allow space for other people's perspectives to also um, be present and for them to be able to intimate their fully human experience without um, having to worry about the, the kinds of things you normally have to worry about if you, if you have a gig, right? And she really just changed everything for us. Um, she's obviously the baddest, for me, flawless living. I say that every night, she hates it. <laughs> I say it and I've heard her play in so many different contexts, right? So it's like, yeah, she can play Donnelly, but also the flower duet, duets, and then come in and play some salsa music, it's everything. And I say this every night from this stage, and I mean it from the bottom of my heart. If she's allowed to say what it is, she came to say musically. At a minimum, it will be impossible to remember what the flute sounded like preceding her contributions in that kind of play, right? And unless you're you're really, really into this music and, and a, a sophist as it relates to the, the old spasm music, when you think about Louis Armstrong's sound, you see that as a beginning, right? The sound. The players before him were part of what he did with the sound of the instrument. He's the first guy that goes from cornet to trumpet, right? So the sound of that thing is it's a it's a landmark. And I, I think we're, we're catching her in the beginning of an incredible journey. And um, uh, there's just no one like her in the world doing this thing. So the queen to me in this music, Miss Elena Pendergew's on the beat.
One more time, y'all. Weedy Brahma. The Maestro. Give it up for Weedy, y'all. On the drum, Lele Howe. Earlier, you heard the Baba and our teacher, Richard Howe. On the bass, Rioma Takenaga. On the electric guitar, Mr. Cecil Alexander. On the flute, Elena Pendergues, everybody. And um, the Am Chief Azure, thank y'all for coming out and giving us. We appreciate y'all so much. We're going to come back out there, have merch and all kinds of cool stuff. We'll come out and sign some things. I'll stick around. Thank y'all.